Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on alternating row and column colors using Microsoft Excel. So I have here some fictitious data in an Excel worksheet. I'm going to show you how to use conditional formatting to alternate the colors of the rows and of the columns. So we, of course, can do this without conditional formatting. So let's say I wanted to alternate the row formatting. So I would take, say, column or row uh, three here, and then press control, and then row five, and then row seven. So I can highlight all these. I can select all these cells, and then go up to the color. And let's say I want to make it uh, like gray. So that takes some time. You have to select all the ranges manually. Uh, but there's another problem with this. Say that we want to insert another record into this data set. It's going to throw off the formatting. So you added another column that was gray instead of continuing to alternate as we wanted. So I'm just going to press Control Z here. And then again to get rid of that formatting. And if you do the same thing with the columns, so you select the column data and you format in this manner and you want to add another variable, you'll run into the same problem. So we use conditional formatting to get around this. So I'll first start with the rows. So first we want to take a look at the data that we're going to be formatting. And we can see that we have in row 1 the labels for the columns. So usually we want to have the first record, in this case participant 0 or 1001, we want to have the first record not be formatted. And we want to start the formatting here with the second record, 1002. So I'm going to highlight the range that I want to be affected by these changes. And then I'm going to go to conditional formatting. And I want to establish a new rule. And you can see there are quite a few different types of rules. I'm going to go to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And here you have an edit the rule description format values where this formula is true. And since I want it to start with row 3, I'm going to use this formula. I'm going to use odd, and open parenthesis, row, and then open and close parenthesis, then close parenthesis, equals row, and then open and close parenthesis. So odd row equals row. And let's set a format here. Uh, the uh, format would be a fill in most cases. Let's go with kind of a light blue. And we'll click OK. And you can see now the odd rows have the formatting and the even don't. So if I want to insert a variable in this situation, or a case, uh, you can see that it retains the it retains the formatting. So with this type of formatting, it's a little easier to track the cases, which are in rows, uh, horizontally across the spreadsheet. But what if you want to be able to track the variables vertically across the spreadsheet? Well, with the example I have so far, which is the uh, odd row equals row, you can just go into conditional formatting, manage rules, and you can just edit the same rule. And in this case, we'll uh, leave it with odd, but instead we're going to put in column. Because right, variables are stored in columns and cases are stored in rows. So we'll have column. So now it's odd column 
equals column. And notice the use of parentheses there. I'm going to apply this rule. And you can see now it has formatted the odd column. So it included column A, because A would be equal to column 1. So in this particular data set, it might look a little better if the ID was not formatted and the first variable was. Again, you don't have to select the range again. You can just go right to conditional formatting, manage the rules, edit this rule, and instead of odd, you use the function even. And of course, you can do this for the rows as well. Apply that, and now you have the even rows formatted. I have restricted the formatting to just the area where the data are displayed. I have not included the labels up top. Of course, you can do that. You could extend the selection to include the data and the labels, and then set the rule to affect that entire region, and your labels would change to match the formatting in the column, in this case, the light blue. Now, of course, there's other options here for this particular rule, uh, for, for the rule that managed the color for the rows, and for this rule that manages the color for the columns. Of course, you have a lot of different formatting options. So if you edit this rule, uh, I selected a light blue uh, background. But, of course, you have a wide variety of colors you can choose from, uh, like, like, for example, this light green. But not just this. You can also format border. Right now, there is often a limit to how many changes you want to make, like uh, how, how much formatting you want to conduct on any particular column. But you could change the uh, style of the lines, say for outside the different columns. You could change the font, making it bold, say. And of course you could change how the numbers are formatted. Uh, I would not recommend this. I would probably restrict uh, most changes to just the fill, maybe sometimes the border and sometimes the font, depending on the situation. So you can see it gives you a preview of what that would look like click OK and apply. And that's a fairly marked change. And notice it just happens to match that pretest color. Uh, but this is a fairly dramatic change compared to just the light blue with the same outline and then without the bold. Another possible way to format these data uh, and these alternating columns that could be useful would be to uh, add the same rule, leave the line uh, the same, the border, which was this one, a solid thin border, and have no fill and just have the bold. So it still allows you to differentiate the columns, but without the colors. And I think what, what is useful about this particular design is you can overlay the alternating rows, and it doesn't look too complex. Like you don't have uh, intersecting colors for both the vertical and horizontal directions. So in this case, I would create a new rule, and I would use the formula to determine which cells to format. And this would be equals, and I'll go back to the odd row, equals row. And let's try for the format. Let's just do the fill and we'll make it uh, 
be like a gray. All right, so odd row equal row equals row. Click OK. So you can see this is a way to combine the alternating column changes with alternating row changes where the row has the gray alternating and the column has the bold versus the normal formatting for the numbers. So I want to show you one last possibility working with this. Um, well, there's actually several possibilities with the formatting, but uh, one type of formatting that might be common that you may want to use. If you want to edit the bold here, let's edit this rule for the columns, the formatting. You can also change the color. So we could make this a regular font, but change the color to say red. If we go back in, and you can see now we have the columns alternate the color uh, with red font and the rows have uh, the gray that they had before. I hope you found this video on alternating row and column colors and formatting to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.